progress. Officer on scene. Looks like we have a situation here. Four 
Martin, what happened? We've got him, Jack. We got our guy. I'm on my way. Well, what's the situation? Two things. First of all, our guy isn't a guy. What? She's over six feet tall. She's so strong it took three guys to take her down and she wasn't even putting up a fight. If she had a mind to cause trouble, we would have needed a tank. Second, she's not saying a word. Nothing at all. When we took her down, she was packing her drill in her bag and going out somewhere. The clues in her trailer, they were... Well, there's not a lot of room for doubt. There's a lot of evidence. I'm going in. Be careful. I'll bet she could snap those handcuffs if she wanted. There's no doubt this is the woman who's been killing women across Freeburg. 
but it's not the dentist sitting in front of me. Either she began killing at the tender age of four, or someone's playing games with us. A game I don't yet see. But this woman knows more than I do. Shame that her eyes are so empty. She's not gonna answer my questions. At least not today. She's finished her bloody job, but she's working for someone else. Not hard to guess who's behind this. So fast? She say something? She's not gonna tell us anything, Martin. I'm going home, get a couple more hours sleep. <coughs> One of the nice things about the world going to hell, everyone's secrets are quickly revealed. Who has time for secrets these days? Yeah, a box of Caesars. With that outfit, I could see you coming a mile away, Mr. Boyd. Ah, Mr. Chaffee. Knowing your love of theatrics, I was afraid you'd keep the mystery surrounding the dentist going for at least another day or two. <laughs> what could you mean, Mr. Boyd? <laughs> well, it's true. Robespierre does have a passion for mystery and the dramatic. But there's no need to confuse the actor with his character. For you, I'll play the hurried businessman who likes to cut to the chase. That's not quite me either, but though this mask I wear is quite a burden, I have long grown used to it. Besides, I don't want to distract you from your 180-day quest, not for a second longer than necessary. My, is half your time already up? You simply cannot imagine, Mr. Boyd, the painstaking work I've done to cultivate this maniac image. I turn to such literature the likes of which I wish I never knew. If our law enforcement agencies possessed even the slightest aesthetic sense, they would have instantly seen the game for what it was. <laughs> and the postcards. What can I say? And if the real Dennis turned up again at the wrong moment? I don't imagine lunatics take kindly to imposters. The dentist died of a heart attack last spring while he was sunbathing on the beach. I discovered this quite by accident. From a university friend, a therapist. It was he who convinced the dentist to stop killing, by the way. Why the murders? Obviously they'd all been raped by Rogers. It would have been much easier to just get them to talk. Mr. Boyd, the last thing I want is to appear a brutish butcher. I spent enough time on these women to know they were no use to me alive. Not sure if I should be ashamed to say it, but Stuart Rogers far surpasses me in his ability to intimidate people. Apparently, such things only come with experience. But murder? For that I truly do feel ashamed. It's a burden I shall have to bear for the rest of my days. But sadly, it's not my greatest shame. What could be more shameful? To frame an innocent woman for such terrible crimes? What? Are you unhappy with a woman cast as the serial killer? Firstly, I'd say Dear Jordan adds a certain grace to the whole sordid story. And second, of all the people I hold in my debt, she's the strongest. And not just physically. Third, she had good reason to settle her debt with me as quickly as possible. Without going into details, I'll just say that she's a very, very caring mother. Do these taste good? Had we met earlier, Mr. Boyd, I would have shown you a far more refined pleasure. One without such an unpleasant smell. I'm afraid to even imagine what you count as pleasures, Mr. Chaffee. Fountains of blood in the city square? Mr. Boyd, you're not listening to me at all. I didn't take any enjoyment from the killings. Everything I've done was of strict necessity. I couldn't make Jordan kill all the women that Rogers raped. That would have been excessive. If I had made her kill them all, you'd be rather upset, no? 
I can't say I fully understand your plan, Mr. Chaffee, but you've given me more than enough reasons to arrest you. Yes, but allow me to counter them with one good reason not to. I think you mentioned you dined here once? Yes, not the best restaurant in town. And maybe you're just not familiar with the full range of our services. When I inherited this tasteless place from my father, I knew I could never make it into an exquisite restaurant. Instead, I accentuated the atrocity of it all, an aesthetic of a different kind. Now I even live here. To me, this complex is like a microcosm of Freeburg. <laughs> uh, but we're not here to talk about that. At school, I read a French novel whose name doesn't need mentioning, and I read many amazing things. It seems that in Paris, just before the Revolution, certain places were quite popular. People of wealth and taste visited from the city, shed their luxurious coats, peeled off their white gloves, and with the help of the local farmer, they brutally stabbed a hole in a bull and decorated themselves with the splattering blood as they prepared a large piece of meat for the fire. In the bull's suffering, these effeminate aristocrats found a perverse sort of pleasure. Now I make these pleasures available to the people of Freeburg. I will be honest with you. People who pursue such cruelty truly are crazy. But what is interesting... The best steaks are cut from the tender meat of young bulls. Eleven months is just right. Beautiful, healthy, full of strength. But these wealthy degenerates who pay $7,000 so our experts will show them where to plunge the blade for maximum effect. Even they don't have the spirit to slaughter the young bull. The thought never enters their minds. They look into the eyes of the healthy animal bursting with energy and they quickly shuffle past. As if by instinct, they are drawn to the old, weary, fading bulls. And then, with terrible smiles on their faces, they chew through tough steaks that taste of burning rubber. They feel that they're doing something real with their own hands, a sort of natural selection, as if they're agents in the natural process. But nature also teaches us that the old beast unable to fend off any threat, might yet survive if it cowers in a dark corner and pretends it doesn't exist. Then, perhaps, the young predator will pass. Mr. Scott will drive you back. I'm late for an appointment. Mr. Boyd, you won't believe it, but the person I just got off the phone with was talking about you. Seems like I'm pretty popular these days. By the way, Mr. Boyd, I've got to ask, why half a million? Go fuck yourself, Troy Star.
12 complete.